her enough uh, for rescheduling her entire schedule to be here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Peggy Hubbard. Thank you. Do I have any veterans in here in the house? Raise your hand, please. On behalf of me, my husband, and our country, I'd like to say thank you for your service. I too am a Navy veteran. I'll give you a little background real fast. I worked for the IRS for 17 years. Don't hold it against me. In those years, I was also a law enforcement police officer putting two daughters through college. When I left my IRS job, I worked 12 hours. Then I got off work, changed my uniform in the bathroom of the federal building in St. Louis and put on my uniform and patrolled the streets from six in the morning to three o'clock, six in the evening to three o'clock in the morning. And then turned around and got up at seven and did it again. I did that for almost five years. And I learned a lot about being a police officer. My husband of 30 years, Mr. Happy, is what I call him, Charles Hubbard. My husband, Charlie, has been a cop now for 31 years. He served with St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and he was at the Ferguson riots as they broke out. We were actually on our way home from Sturgis, the motorcycle rally, when that horrible day happened. And they called him and told him while he was on the highway, he had to get there. He made it. I dropped him off and I didn't see him for almost two weeks. The night that Ferguson burned, I got a call from my husband to come to the hospital. And not knowing the situation, he told me to bring him a set of uniforms. And I did, and underwear and deodorant. And I'm going, what's going on? So I got to the hospital and much to my surprise, they were out in the parking lot being decontaminated. The protesters threw bottles of urine and feces at them and he was covered in it. They don't tell you this on CNN, on Fox News, MSNBC, what these, these officers went through. Darren Wilson is a very good friend of mine. My husband actually trained him after he came out the academy. And he said the reason why he survived that night in Ferguson is because of the training my husband gave him. Fast forward 2016, I got a knock at the door. Nobody, no wife or a husband or mother or father want that knock. I got that knock. 12.30 at night, Bovo police came to my house and said, we're sorry to inform you, I fell to my knees. And my daughter told me I let out a scream she's never heard before. And they could not tell me anything, but he was critical and not conscious. So waiting 45 minutes to an hour for St. Louis City Police to find my house, everything's going through my head, my world is over. I've been with this man and known him since he was seven. I tried to drown him in summer camp, so. <laughs> Fell in love with him later. I get to the hospital and my husband is screaming in the emergency room and they're turning him. I can't go in and I can hear his muffled cries. Down the hall was the guy who shot my husband. He was a Black Lives Matter organizer out of St. Louis. My husband was shot above the chest, above the vest, right on his left side, came out of his back. He spun around, he tried to put the gun to his head, the gun jammed. As my husband recovered, he shot my husband behind the arm and it came out on the top of his chest on his right side. My husband actually jumped in front of the bullet. The gunman's baby, two years old, was right in the line of fire. My husband took the bullet to save that baby. Now, you guys, you don't know, I'm married to Wyatt Earp. <laughs> Both sides of my husband's body being shot. He goes down, he levels off with his 45, and he shoots him twice in the butt. He puts him down. 
that guy is now doing 27 years in prison with his father who is doing double life. These are just many stories that wives and husbands like myself deal with every single day. Our police officers are under attack. That should not be. When we send our spouses, our sons and daughters out to serve our community, we expect them to come back in the condition we sent them out. My friend David Dorn was murdered in June, Facebook Live. I watched my friend of over 30 years and my husband's former commander die on Facebook Live. Our society is broken. They want to defund you. Why don't we defund some of these politicians? Why don't we take away their security? Why don't we take away their officers that have the AR-15s? And let's see how well they fare out there without protection. This is our line. The thin blue line means something. Society cannot stand if they fall. And I'm not ready for let it fall. Men out there, women out there that serve us, and this was my pledge to you when I ran for U.S. Senate. He forgot to tell you that. I lost. I lost to a rhino, but that's okay. I'm coming back for Tammy Duck Worthless. My promise was to you men and women out there that hear my voice, if they want you, they're going to have to go through me. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants an angry black chick up their butts. Ask my husband, he'll tell you. Our country is being torn apart. Now granted, when I did that video back in 2015, and I said, their job is to serve and protect, not serve and die. I meant that. Anybody, in my opinion, who kills a cop, harms a cop, injures a cop, does not deserve to walk around in our society. No way, no how. No way. None. One of my first jobs had I would have been chosen to be your next senator, and I'm going to be. I'm going to write the David Dorn Law and the Nick Hopkins Law, because both of those guys were my friends that I lost. I want to make it a federal hate crime if you injure, kill a police officer. You better think twice. Because if I can't stick a needle in your arm, if I cannot put you in an electric chair, then I'm gonna make damn sure you never see the light of day. Never. Our country was built on differences. That's how we became this country. I was never a slave. Closest I came to picking cotton was at Walgreens when I picked up a bag. You never owned any slaves. So let's put down the race card and let's be Americans. If you have to put a color on Peggy Hubbard, I'm not from Africa, I'm from St. Louis. I take offense to the term African American because in Africa, do you know what they call us blacks from America? They call us Americans. But if you have to put a color on me, I am red, white, and blue. You wanna defund our police officers? You go first. Let's take away your security. We saw what happened in Portland when they turned on the mayor and he had to run for his life. We're seeing what's happening right now in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Two 
200% crime increase, ladies and gentlemen, and they're trying to figure out what happened. Well, duh, you took away their budget. So when you pick up the phone and dial 911, you think that other group is gonna come? I think not. Chicago had over 6,000 people shot last year. Right now, they're gonna surpass that. They have more people in the hospital from gunshot wounds than they have from COVID-19. I kid you not. And they want to tell us we have a police problem. No, we have a morals problem. We have a problem with people not listening to God's law. Now they want to tell you that the police are out there hunting us. No, they're not. That's a false narrative. 2019, 2019, do you know how many unarmed white folks were actually shot by police? 19. 2019, how many unarmed black folks were shot by police? Nine. So explain to me the reasoning behind BLM. It doesn't make sense, it doesn't add up. Thank you. You get your 20 after this. That's the problem. We have false narratives. We have people that are making our heroes out of villains and villains out of heroes. Where crime does pay. If you break the law, you're gonna get a check. If your police officer defending your life or somebody else's, they're gonna throw you under the bus. I call it the Ferguson effect because I lived Ferguson. That must be by my husband. <laughs> That's what's happening in our country. Their job is hard enough. Our former president put a target on these men and women's back during Ferguson. Let's be honest. He put a target on your backs. We have a president who's trying to remove those targets. We have a president that's going to continue to fund the police. You are well deserving of all the accolades because without you, my men and women in blue, that line breaks, that blue line breaks. God have mercy because I know a whole lot of people down in the country that are just waiting to pop off. And I'm afraid of that. We all should be afraid of that. We all should shudder for the thought of if our men and women lay down their badges, lay down their guns and walked away, we would not have any resemblance of a nation. We would not. And I'm here to stand up with you. I became a Republican in 2015 when I saw what that man did to law enforcement. When he actually blamed the Dallas cops that laid down their lives. He actually blamed them for their deaths. I was through with the Democratic Party. I was done. I walked away. I walked away before walk away was even a thing. I left the Democratic plantation. I wanted to be free. I wanted to be an American. I wanted to stand up for law enforcement. I wanted to stand up for the military. I wanted to stand up for our veterans. I wanted to stand up. It is time for us to stand up. They stand in front of us every day. We're supposed to stand up in front of them. They need us right now. They need us more than ever. And I tell people on my Facebook page, if you see a police officer, a sheriff's deputy, an EMS worker, a firefighter, walk up to them and just extend your hand and say thank you. It goes a long way. Thank you. 
care about your ideology or your politics. I don't care about that because when it all comes down to it, the first persons that you're going to call when you hit 911, you're going to have somebody coming to your rescue. If you picked up the phone and nobody answered, We're now playing The Purge, the home edition. We have got to come together as a nation. We have got to come together for these men and women. I am sick and tired of going to funerals of my friends and laying them to rest. I came very close to that in 2016 of losing the love of my life. And I got angry and I put myself out there and I'm a huge target right now. Anybody that stands up with the police and military or our president are targets. You are a target. I am sick and tired of people telling you what you are based on the color of your skin. I am sick and tired of people hating on cops because of the job they do because they can't do this job. There's no way. They holler about how bad the police are. I tell them to strap up, suit up, and go out there on the streets and try to do the job that they do. All the child abuse cases they have to deal with, all the sick cases they have to deal with, all the murders they have to deal with. And it's not by the police, let's be honest. It's not. 52 people were shot in Chicago, 12 murdered, killed. Police didn't do not one shooting in Chicago. Same thing in St. Louis, 14 shootings in one night, four dead. Cops didn't do not one of those. Let's flip that narrative. We have a problem. That problem is not with the police. The problem is they're not being funded enough to do their jobs. That's the problem. They're leaving our major cities for the suburbs because they're tired of the politics. When does saving a life becomes a political move? You gotta ask yourself that question. When does saving a life, guarding people's welfare, a political move? Men and women in blue, I support you. I love you, and like I said, if they want you, they gotta come through me. I was in Walmart the other day. I'm gonna tell this story, everybody keeps asking about it. I had on my Trump 2020 mask. I think it's silly we have to wear a mask. But I wore my mask because I just wanted to piss people off. I had on my blue line police t-shirt now mind you, I'm, I'm, throwing, I'm coming off a of Harley, so I'm looking pretty badass. <laughs> got the chain going, got my boots, my cowboy boots. It's nothing like riding a Harley in cowboy boots. So hot, woo! <laughs> so I get off my Harley, I walk into Walmart, I throw on my mask, I'm walking around, I'm feeling a little bodacious. This man walks up behind me, taps me on my shoulder and says, I'm so sorry you have to wear that disgusting mask. I turned around and looked at him. I said, I'm sorry your wife has to have sex with you. <laughs> he looked at me and I said, what, 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 what? Come on, we can do this. We can do this. Nobody should tell you who you can and cannot support. Nobody. I gave 13 years in the Navy to this country. Now I'd be damned if somebody's gonna tell me who I cannot support. And while I'm on the subject, you all out here, you better be marching your butts into those voting booths. We're not voting by mail. We're not doing it. If I can go to Walmart, doggone it, you can go in the booth and vote. If Nancy can get her hair did, you can go and vote. If JB Cupcake 
can go to Florida and China, you can vote. Our country was built on differences. Our country is always going to be divided no matter what. It's always going to have some kind of systemic divide. It is. That's the God's honest truth. But what should not happen, what should not happen is turning our backs on our firefighters, police officers, paramedics, EMS, dispatchers, we need them. We hear you. I want to hear you. Our military, our police, our veterans, our firefighters, our EMS, our veterans that are still standing and still fighting. Just because we don't wear the uniform does not mean our honor has faded. It is still here. We are still here. And it's gonna be those veterans that are gonna lead that charge, if need be. You don't want this, none of it. But when I see that flag with the blue line, that's my heart. That's my husband when I look at him. That's your son. That's your daughters. That's your husband. That's your wife. That's your uncle. That's your grandfather. That's everything that makes America great. And we're going to continue that. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to push back. And I want to tell you, and I want you to hear me and hear me well. If you want our police, firefighters, paramedic, 911 dispatchers, if you want them, trust me, you don't want to come through Peggy Hubbard because Peggy Hubbard's going to rip you a new one. I love you guys. Let's back our blue. Let's stand up. Be proud of the uniform you wear. Be proud, because without you, there is no us. I love you guys with all my heart. Thank you.